The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. While it may be a lost season for the Boston Red Sox, on this night in July down in Texas, it was not a lost game for sure. Dennis Eckersley strikes out 10, throws a two-hitter. The Red Sox pound the Rangers 6 0. Jim Rice making his MVP candidacy really, really, really strong. Doubled home Jerry Remy in the first. 1 0 Boston. George Boomer. The Red Sox missed him this spring, but they have him for the summer. His fourth of the year, a two run blast. 3 0 Boston. In the third, Butch Hobson, a sack fly. 4 0 or 3 0 Boston. The Scott Homer, 4 0 on the Hobson sack fly. In the fourth, Remy singled home Evans, and Rice doubles home Remy. The Red Sox 6 0. Eckersley, a six hit shutout. He goes to 9 and 9 on the year and strikes out 10. Doc Medich, a complete game loss, but he drops to 6 and 6. The Red Sox, can they make a run? The Rangers are trying to hang on to the Royals. They play next. As Retro Sports Network presents Major League Baseball replay. 19, I'm going to hit the button, 1978. Today, we're waiting for the game to work. Tonight, June or July 27th, 1978 from Arlington. It's the Boston Red Sox and the Texas Rangers. And tonight's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spreaker, Spotify, Facebook, and wherever else fine podcasts are listed. Good evening, my name is Ron Juckett. I'm assuming uh, yep, the, the microphone is working, and welcome to the broadcast on a Monday night. The Red Sox... This is game number 99 for them. They are 47 and 51. And if some strange things happen, they can make some hay over the final 60 games. Not been a good road trip for them. They've not played well away from Fenway Park. The Rangers, also game number 99, 52 and 46. John Matlack on the hill for them. He's looking for his 12th win of the year, and his ERA is under 2. So the Rangers are in probably the heavy favorite. Louis Tiant goes for the Red Sox. And so we'll see. It's a warm night. It's a rainy night. 88 degrees, a light rain in Arlington. Bring your Dr. Pepper. Bring your umbrellas. It's time for baseball right here on Retro Sports Network. And so we say hello to Big Clue and Mr. Forsberg. How are you? John Metlack making his 19th start of the year. He'll have 14 more to go after this. Fastball pitcher at 88. He is 11-3 with an ERA of 196 and has not faced the Red Sox in this replay. The last time out for the lefty was a loss to the Brewers where he was lit right up on the 22nd. Nine innings, eight hits. Eight runs, but only one of those runs for was earned. He walked two and struck out six. So overall, 151 and two-thirds innings, 130 hits. Thank you, my friend. Eight home runs, 41 runs in total, 33 earned runs, 29 walks, and 81 strikeouts. And here's a lineup he'll face for the Boston Red Sox. I am managing the Red Sox. Jerry Remy is in leading off and will bat first, obviously, and play second. Make the mistake. Oh, you narrate this so well. Let me make some elementary mistakes, my dear Watson. Bowen is in center field, not Lynn. He'll bat second. Jim Rice in left will bat third. Carlton Fisk cleans up behind the plate. Butch Hobson at third will bat fifth. Oh, my God, what a horrible lineup. Well, it's against the lefties, too, so no Freddie Lynn, no Carl Yastrzemski. Bob Bailey is a DH. He'll bat sixth. Thanks, Jeremiah. Uh, Dwight Evans is in right field. He'll bat seventh. Jason Kendall is at first. He'll bat eighth. 
No Boomer with the lefty on the mound. And Frank Duffy at short for Rick Burleson. He'll bat ninth. Tiant on the mound. He should throw 125 pitches. Uh, that's that's true. That's true. We can make that an ad, though. I like that. All right, defensively for the Rangers. Kurt, uh, in left field, Al Oliver is a 5 and a 7 in left. Juan Benique is a 9 and a 7 in center. And Bobby Bonds is a 7 and 8 in right. Kurt Bavakwa, who's playing for a bunt I'm not going to do, is a 6 at third. He's a terrible fielder, by the way. Bert Campanaris is an 8 at short. Bump Wills is a 7 at second. And Mike Hargrove is an 8 at first. Jim Sundberg at 10 and a 9 on behind the plate. And John Matlack at 8 on the mound with a 921. Fielding percentage. Remy at 282. He should be with us the rest of the way. A home run, 4 triples and 31. RBI. Pitch to the Rem Dog is a base hit into left center, and that's how this one starts. Benitez picked it up, and Remy's on with a single. Sam Bowen, if you don't remember who he is, I don't either. But he is one for seven on the real year, one for three on the replay, and must be in for Freddie Lynn. He hit a solo homer in, in seven at bats and scored three times. I just got the joke, Big Clue. I'm not reading that one out loud. That's not very nice. It's funny, though. Pitch to Bowen. Struck him out. Matlack got him with a 2-2 curve on the inside corner. One out for Jim Rice. And Jimmy, at 324, 33 home runs and 88 RBI. Good-sized crowd tonight in Arlington. Hopefully, we'll get a good-sized crowd in the chat. Throw to first, Remy back. Pitch to Rice is a ground ball to Bavacqua. Goes to Wills for one. No throw to first, so they'll trade Remy for Rice. And that'll be two out. Yeah, I don't remember Sam Bowen. Carlton Fisk is at 282. 13 homers and 53 RBI. Double header for you tomorrow. Phillies and Reds from Cincinnati, 11.30 Eastern Time. And if Lorenzo pops in, 8.30 Pacific. So doubleheader tomorrow morning, starting at 11.30, the Phillies and the Reds from Riverfront Stadium. Pitch to Fisk is a base hit left center field. Rice will hold at second. Fisk on first, and there's two out for Butch Hobson. Big Clue tells us that Bowen was drafted by a major league team five times, but didn't sign until 1974 with the Red Sox. Butch Hobson at 250, 11 homers, and 45 RBI. Runners on first and second, and two out. Top the first. In the center, Benitez makes the catch, and that will retire the side. Two hits for the Red Sox. They leave them both on. We go to the bottom of the first. Boston nothing. Here come the Rangers. And for Louis Tiant, this has not been his best year. He is 6-8 and eight with a 3 8 ERA. About halfway through his starts of the year today. This is start number 17. He'll make 14 more. So... Okay, a little more than halfway. He's made two against the Rangers, and the Rangers have eaten him up like pancakes. He is 0-1 with an ERA of 6-1-9 against Texas. In 16 innings, he's allowed 15 hits. 11 runs, all earned. He's walked six and struck out six. His last time out against the Royals on the 22nd. Did I do that game? I might have. He lost, so I'm sure I did that game. Eight innings, nine hits, four runs, three earned. He's walked one and struck out one. So overall, as the cat comes back on the bed, 135 innings, 130 hits, 12 home runs, 63 in total, 57 earned. He's walked 27 and struck out 63. Fastball tops out at 84. Should pitch well here in Texas, though. He's a fly ball plus pitcher. That does not do well at Fenway Park. In the lineup, he'll face Mike Hargrove will lead it off at first base. Juan Benitez will play, will bat second and play center. 
Jim Sundberg behind the plate will bat third. Al Oliver cleans up and left. Bobby Bonds, who had been leading off for Texas, is down to fifth. George Gary Gray is a DH. He'll bat sixth. Kurt Bavacqua, Tom Lasorda's favorite player, will bat seventh and play third. Bump Wills hits eighth and hits and plays second. And Burt Campanaris will hit ninth and play short. Matlack threw 19 pitches in the first. Defensively for Boston, Jim Rice a six and a six and left. Sam Bowen a two and a two in center. That's like a Lawrence Welk player in it. A one and a two. Dwight Evans a ten and an eight in right. Butch Hobson a six at third. Frank Duffy a three at short. Jerry Remy a six at second. Jason Kendall doesn't have a lot of range at first. He's a two. Carlton Fisk an eight and a seven. And Louis Tiant is a seven. So with all that, Mike Hargrove at 291, seven homers and 46 RBI. Ball four. So Tiant missed low with a 3-0 count. And that'll bring up Juan Benitez. At 251, five homers and 21 RBI. My guess is we got about... Uh, I've actually kind of have August sketched out. So this probably will run until August, this replay. So plenty of baseball to come. Pitch to Beniquez is a drag bunt. Fisk will pick it up. Remy covers, and Beniquez is out. So Hargrove goes to second. Here's Sunberg at 251, three homers, and 23 RBI. Pitch. Up the middle, that's a base hit. Hargrove will round third. Bowen will throw it in. And Hargrove will hold. I'm surprised. But with Al Oliver at the plate, why take your chances? He's hitting 318. 10 homers and 50 RBI. So runners on the corners and one out. Pitch to Oliver. And that's a base hit up the middle. Hargrove will score. Sunberg will hold at second. Oliver on first. And there's only one out. The Rangers lead one nothing. Here's Bobby Bonds, who's hitting 236. 11 home runs and 43 RBI. In the left, Rice has it for the out. Sunberg will tag. He's going to try for third. Rice's throw to Hobson is in time. So Rice made the catch, planted his foot, threw it to Hobson, and that will end the inning. So a run for the Rangers on it on two hits and no errors. They strand a runner after one, one nothing Texas. Brings up Bob Bailey, Dwight Evans, and Jason Kendall. Bailey at 245, three homers and six RBI. Pitch to Bailey. There's a liner in the right in front of Bonds, and that's a single. So the third hit for the Red Sox brings up Dewey at 203, 12 homers, and 47 RBI. Pitch to Dwight. Hit him. So the Red Sox have two on. Got him right in the ribs. And now bring up oh Fred Kendall. Look, Jason, his son. Fred at 115, can't bunt, can hit and run, which is interesting for a team that has no speed. He has no homers and is driven in a run. Pitch from Matlack, Kendall up the middle, that's a base hit. Bailey will hold it third. And that'll be, okay, Jason Kendall is Fred's son. So that brings up Frank Duffy. Bases loaded and nobody out for the Red Sox. Bailey on third. Evans on second. Kendall on first. For Duffy, who can bunt. I can't sacrifice? Or I can't, oh, I'm going to squeeze. And he's a 10. You know what we're going to do? We're going to squeeze. The safety squeeze is on. The bun is down. Here comes Bailey. The throw to second. They get Kendall. It works. Bailey scores. And it's tied at one. 
So Duffy does his job. The run scores. One out. Evans on third. Please all pass out accordingly. Yeah, Fred was a catcher. He's playing first base tonight. So is Jason. So brings up Remy, who singled his first time up. Matt Lack threw nine batters, 30 pitches. An inning and a third, four hits, a run it was earned, and he struck out one. And, yep, the Red Sox safed a squeezed home a run. Father and son, Kendall, attended Torrance High School, famous as the school in Beverly Hills, 90210. And, as Big Clue would know, this is the type of stuff you don't find in your average Fortnite stream. Pitch to Remy is in the center field. That should score Evans. Benitez moves over. Evans will tag. He's going to run, and the throw goes in the infield, and the Red Sox are up 2-1. to one. Brings up Bowen, who struck out his first time up. So not the start that Matlack wanted. Throw to first Buffy Duffy back. That's funny. Now he'll pitch to Bowen. Ground ball to Hargrove. That was a hard knocker, and he went to the bag to retire the side. But the Red Sox get two runs on two hits and no errors. We go to the bottom of the second. Boston 2, Texas 1. So cooling off just a little bit here in the light ring. Gary Gray at 222. Real life, 240, two homers and six RBI. Tiant starts the second with strike three. Swung on and missed an 86 mile an hour fastball, and there's one away for Kurt Bavakwa. At 171, a homer and 14 RBI. Pitch to Kurt. In the left or right center, Bowen will make the catch. Too fast out for Bump Wills at 248, eight homers. And 30 RBI. I think he came from Cleveland. I think he was part of the trade that sent Bernie Carbo to Cleveland. Hobson and Kendall will play for the bunt. Don't hold me to that, though. Ball four. So Wills, a two-out walk. That brings up Campanaris at 243. Three homers and 40 RBI. And Campy got hit. And so Wills goes into scoring position. First and second, two out for Hargrove. So Tiant through nine batters, 32 pitches, an inning and two thirds, two hits, two walks, a run, it was earned in a strikeout. Ah, I graduated high school with a guru who attended Torrance High School, a freshman and sophomore year, same class as Jason Kendall. Oh, cool. And this is when we all say, she was your prom date. Nice, maybe. My prom date was nice. I won't tell you her name, but she was very nice. Pitch to Highgrove is a fly ball to right. Evans is there, and he drops it. Wills will score. Campanaris goes to third. Dwight Evans, who is... As steady as the Rock of Gibraltar in right field dropped it. But your wife is way better. My, I would agree with that. My, your wife is way better. No, my wife is way better too. I'm still friends with my prom date though. We actually went as two single people. Very sweet. Very sweet woman. Juan Beniquez is at, uh, must have got hit by a pitch his first time up. Two out. And Tion got him. So just below the belt on strike three, a run on no hits and an error by Dwight Evans, of all people. After two, deuces wild in Texas. Boston to the Rangers two. So that brings up Rice. Jim is 0 for 1. Struck him out. Matlack got him on a 2-2. Swung on and missed. So brings up Carlton Fisk, who singled. His first time up, he's one for one in the right field. Bonds, two out. 
brings up Hobson, Butch is 0 for 1. And Matlack, after a rough second, is settling in. Got him. Matlack got him to check his swing on a 1-2 fastball, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the third, 2-2. Two, two. So the standings, Texas has slid into third place. Two and a half behind the Royals and a half game behind the Angels who've won four straight. Minnesota three and a half. In the East, Boston is up to fourth place again, 11 and a half back. They've won two straight. The Yankees by two over Milwaukee and three over Baltimore. In the National League, in the West, the Dodgers have righted the ship. They have a six-and-a-half game lead over the Red Legs. And Houston is nine-and-a-half back. In the East, Pittsburgh has cut the Philly lead to one. Someone wrote today, I don't think Philly can blow this. Oh, hold my beer. Yeah, you knew they would. You knew Houston would fade as soon as they got out of the Astrodome. Sunberg singled his first time up. He's one for one. Pitch from Teon. Ground ball to Hobson. Of course, Butch boots it. Sunberg safe. Hit off his glove. And so the Red Sox now have two errors. Brings up Al Oliver, who is singled and drove in a run in the first. Pitch to Al. Popped up. Fisk takes off the mask. Stands on the plate. One out. For Bobby Bonds, who's 0 for 1. Here's the pitch. Strike. Sunberg was going to go. Couldn't get a good jump. Bonds checked the swing, but it was strike one. Tiant, still a light rain here. 86 degrees. I think he'd find this comfortable. To third, Hobson to Remy for one. They're not going to get Bonds. And so it's 5-4 on the fours. And that brings up Gary Gray, who struck out his first time up. Throw to first, Bonds back. Ivan Holenglove. Yes, yes, Mark, absolutely. For both Bavakwa and Hobson, it's, it's the old Russian third baseman, Ivan Holenglove. Tebow, how you doing, my friend? Nice to have you along. There goes Bonds to throw to Remy on the pitch out, and Barry's in there. How about that? So a stolen base, number 16 since the trade, and a 1-0 count to Gray, and a 2-2 tie in the bottom of the third inning. Gray struck out his first time up. In the left center, Bowen will make the catch. To retire the side. He should be. We can check the next time he's up. No runs. A hit there. Doesn't hurt. After three. Boston two. Texas two. So Bob Bailey. Another household name in his own house. Dwight Evans and Freddie Kendall. To face Matlack here in the fourth. Texas playing a big park here in Arlington. Everything of course is bigger in Texas. Lefties a minus six batting average. Righties are even. And as far as home runs are concerned, minus 13 for the lefties percentage-wise and minus 14 for the righties. Bailey singled and scored in the second. And he'll draw a walk from Matlack to start the fourth. Brings up Dewey. He got hit by a pitch and scored. Up the middle, Campanaris to Wills for one, over to Hargrove, and that should be, and is a 6-4-3. So, Freddie, no, he wasn't traded, he was, but he only played 20 games. So, I can't answer your question, Mark, of when he went to Cleveland. But let's just say that the number, his number, is not going up on the facade in right field at Fenway. Ground ball to Wills over to Hargrove, and that will retire the side. Red Sox, no runs, no hits, no errors. Double play erases a walk. Bottom of the four, three, two, or two, two, 
between the Sox and the Rangers. Kurt Bavak was 0 for 1. Wills and Campanaris to face Tion here in the fourth. Strike three, got away from Fisk to throw down to first, and he's retired. And that's three for Tiant. Bump Wills, a good candidate to bunt, walked and scored in the second. Kendall and Hobson play for the bunt. Wills, ground ball to second. Remy flips it to Kendall, going back to the bag, and that's an out. So two out for Campanaris who was hit by a pitch his first time up. Four hits for the Sox, two for the Rangers. Here in the bottom of the fourth. To make it another hit for the Rangers as Campanaris punches that one into center. So Tiant threw 18 batters, 59 pitches, three and two-thirds innings, three hits, two walks, and three strikeouts. Hargrove is 0 for 1. He's walked and scored. Campy goes, the throw down to second, goes into center field, and Campanaris is on third. As Fisk's throw goes into the outfield. So a 1-0 count, and Campy, the go-ahead run, 90 feet away. Pitch to Hargrove, to third. Hobson over to Kendall across the way, and that will retire the side. The error does not hurt. No runs, a hit, an error, and a runner stranded after four. Two, two, the score. Time to get a drink. Mm. So, a shout out to our two new followers here on Twitch. Justin Bohannon and the Based Lord, B A S E D. Thank you both very much for the follow. So, Frank Duffy has an RBI. Sack fly, he's 0 for 1. Pitch to Frank. Little ground ball down to Hargrove. You'll underhand it to Matlack for the out. One away. Brings up Mr. Remy, Jerry. 0 for 1 with an R, or 1 for 1. He singled and drove in a run. Then hit a sack fly in the second to make it for the other Boston run. Matt Lack threw 18 batters, 71 pitches, 4 and a third innings, 4 hits, a walk, and 3 strikeouts. Did you know Remy posed for Playgirl? In the, the first base side, and Hargrove won't get that. Somebody from Flower Mound made that catch. And the count to Remy is 0-2. Struck him out. An 0-2 curve at the belt. And there's two out for Bowen. Sam is 0-2 with a strikeout. Pitch to Bowen. Got him! So Matlack takes down the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. After four and a half, 2-2. Two, two. And a degenerate like that is now the face of the franchise. He wasn't naked. They did, um, I'll talk about it after the break. We'll see you in 30 seconds. Well, before we devolve into the male version of Klingon ships, we'll tell you how the runs were scored. Al Oliver with an RBI single in the first made it one nothing Texas. Red Sox got two in the second. Frank Duffy with a squeeze play to tie the ball game, and Jerry Remy with a sack fly. But in the spot in the second, Dwight Evans, of all people, with an error, allowed the tying run to score, and that's how it got to 2-2. Two -two. Tiant and Matlack pitching okay. 
nothing great. They're throwing a fair amount of pitches, but they're doing their best to keep their team in the ball game. Bring up Beniquez, who's 0 for 1. Uh, yeah, no, that's... J Jerry's had a, a rough adulthood. His son, Jared, murdered his ex-wife. And, yeah, there was a small child involved in that, too. I mean, that's just between those issues and Jerry's recurring lung cancer. Yeah. Anyway, back in the mid-80s, Plague, yeah, ouch is right. In the mid-80s, they did a whole bunch, no one posed naked, but, you know, athletes in hairy chests, I guess, I don't know. And would you go pose semi-naked on a boat? And so Remy was one of the players that did it. Here's Beniquez. You can all sleep better tonight for that story. 2-2 two -two on the outside, half of the plate, strike three, and that's the fourth for L Louie. El Teante now to face Sunberg was one for two. And there's a base hit opposite field of the left side. Or Ice will pick it up. And that's the fourth hit for the Rangers. So two runs, four hits, three errors for the Red Sox. And they've left three on. Two runs, four hits, and no errors for the Rangers. And five left on. Yeah, thank goodness that 70s hair and mustache era is over. But if you join us from the next support chat, big clue, I've got to remember to pull out a picture of, that my someone took of my now wife and I back when I was 24. It's scary. Al Oliver, by the way, one for two. He is singled and driven in a run. Throw to first. Snap throw, and Sunberg is out. So the pitch was high and inside. Fisk called for the pitch out, and they got him. So two out. How does this part play? I'll, I read it once. I'll read it again. For batting average, minus 6% for the lefties and nothing, and even for the righties. Home runs, minus 13 for the lefties and minus 14 for the righties. No, I'm definitely not impersonating Burt Reynolds. I'm dressed, fully dressed, but it's... um. It's, uh, I don't look like this. Let's just put it that way, okay? Oh, uh, no. Grizzly Adams is more like it. So, a 1 0 count to Oliver. Ground ball to Duffy behind the bag over to first. And that will retire the side. Nope, it's it's Grizzly Adams all the way, man. No runs, no hits, no errors. We played five. The Red Sox and Rangers are tied at two. So Jim Rice, Carlton Fisk, and Butch Hobson to face Matlack here in the sixth. Rice is over two with a strikeout. And there's a line drive to left. Oliver is there. And had that played perfectly. One out for Fisk, who singled. He's one for two. Wind now blowing in from left at five, and the temperature is 85 degrees. In the left center, Juan Beniquez will make the catch. And two out. Full beard. Full beard, full curly hair. The kid that comes in at night to feed me dinner, Sarah showed the picture to him yesterday, and he said, well, "You had your hair. You had your hair permed." I'm like, no. If I let it grow, it grows out curly. It doesn't grow long. Hobson, by the way, is 0 for two with a strikeout. Al, Al, you can picture as the Unabomber. <laughs> Pitch to Hobson is a fly ball to left. Back goes Oliver, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the six as we discuss my older hairstyles from Arlington, and still the Red Sox to the Rangers to. So Bobby Bonds, you want to know if he's on a? No, he's not going to do thirty and thirty. He's only hit 11 homers. This is game number 99 for the Rangers. Yeah, Juan Benique has played for a lot of teams. Was on the 75 Red Sox, as a matter of fact. So Bonds 
since the trade. Well, he did hit. He did no nothing in May. Five in June. Six. Well, maybe he hit six in July, but he's not kidding me. He's only hitting. He hit two eleven in July. Pitch to Bonds is a base hit all the way down the line and left. He's going to get two. Got a stand-up double. Brings up Gary Gray, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. I suppose it's possible, but we're down to the last eight weeks of the season, pretty much. Gary's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Nobody out. 2-2 two -two the score. There goes Bonds to throw down to Hobson, and he's safe. So, he'll probably get the 30 steals. Sox, <laughs> not sure that they'll get the win. So, the count is 0-1 to Gray. Here's the pitch. In the right center, Bowen goes back. He'll make the catch. Bonds will tag and score without a throw, and it's 3-2, Texas. So here's Kurt Bavakwa. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Nobody on one out here in the bottom of the sixth. In the center, Bowen. Two out. That was pretty easy. Bump Wills is 0 for 1. He has walked and scored. And this time he slaps a single in the right center. Evans will pick it up. And that got away. And Wills is going to second. And Remy tagged him out. So Wills, it didn't get away. He overran the bag. And he got caught in a pickle. And Remy says, looky what I got here. This is a ball. And you're out. But the Rangers go up 3-2 to two on a run and two hits and no errors. We go to the seventh. Texas 3, Boston 2. So Bailey, Evans, and Kendall... Bailey one for one, what singled and scored. Bailey, it's a ground ball to Wells over to first for the out. Tebow, we had, um, of course, Beniquez was with the Angels last year, and we did 1982, and the Angels lost in five in the ALCS. Dwight Evans is 0 for 1. He is scored and grounded into a double play. Pitch count wise, yeah, it probably is. He's at 89 with one out here in the seventh. T with 130 expected. To third, Bavakwa across the way, two out. Keeps doing that, he will. Fred Kendall is one for two. Remember, no Yaz, no Freddie Lynn, and no George Scott against the lefty. Popped up left side. Campanaris on the grass. And that will retire the side. Stretch time. 3-2 Texas. I'm not surprised he's a solid A. His ERA coming into the game was under two on the replay. Really was the Texas ace. Campanaris is one for one. He single and singled and stole the base. Texas has speed. He bunts. Fisk will pick it up to Remy covering and Campy's retired. One out. So 27 batters deep for Teon, 85 pitches, 6 in the third inning, 6 hits, 2 walks, and 4 strikeouts. Two of the three Texas runs are earned. Hargrove is 0 for 2. He's got a run scored and a walk. Pitch to Hargrove, ball 4. So a one out walk for the Magic Man Juan Beniquez. Looking so dapper in that picture. 
Juan has struck out twice. He's been half of Teon's four strikeouts. Struck him out. That's three times an 0-2 on the inside corner. Crowd doesn't like it. Brings up Jim Sundberg is two for three. Has single twice. Up the middle of base hit. Hargrove will run to third. And that will bring up L. Oliver, who's one for three. He is singled and driven in a run. The trade for Matt Lack involved four teams and also brought Oliver to Texas, says Big Clue. Of course, it also shipped Burt Blylev into Pittsburgh, where he wins a ring in 79. Sometimes trades benefit everybody. Matt Lack, of course, came over from the Mets. Who did the Mets get in return? A bucket of warm spit? And we've had a rain delay. It rained. How about that? Well, got pitching changes along the way. Oh, Willie Martinez and Ken Henderson to the Mets. Okay. So, apparently light rain caused a 50-minute delay. So, I hope you enjoyed it. As we sat here for a while... And so, Louis Tiant's day is done. Bob Stanley has been given time to warm up, of course, coming out of the delay. Stanley. Computer's not used him at all. It's only his 15th appearance. He's 1-1 one one with four saves and an ERA of 386. Fastball at 85. Throws the palm ball and made me cry a lot as a kid. Where's demos when you need them? Second or third appearance against the Rangers. Two and a third innings, two hits, and a strikeout. He last pitched four days ago against the Royals. Went two thirds of an inning, allowed three hits, a run it was earned, and he took the loss. So 25 and two thirds innings. 29 hits, no homers, 11 runs, all earned. He's walked eight and struck out eight. Man, the computer has not used him at all. Braves were the fourth team in that trade. They got three non-prospects. It's like asking to play the three non-blondes. The best was Tommy Boggs, who pitched just about as yet one of those win-win meh. Trades, yep. Wade Boggs pitches about as well as Tommy. So two out runners in the corners following the rain delay. Oliver one for three with an RBI. There's a base hit in the right center field. Hargrove will score. Sunberg goes to third. And it's four to two. And so for those of you thinking that Matlack was going to go the difference, Mother Nature said no. And Texas will have to go to their pen. Bobby Bonds is one for three. He has stolen two bases. It's doubled and scored. Sunberg on third. Oliver on first. Two out. Bottom of the seventh. Four, three, Texas. In the left field on the ground. That will score Sunberg. Duffy, who's terrible, can't make the play. And it's five to two. Brings up Gary Gray, who's 0 for 2. He has struck out and driven in a run. Nine hits now for the Rangers. Make it 10. That's in the left center. Oliver will score. Bonds goes to third. And Bob Stanley's helping Texas do things right. Here's Bavacqua. He's 0 for 3. The good news is if the Rangers don't go with the lefty, is that we can get some of these scrubs out of here. Pitch to Kurt. To Stanley over to first, and that will retire the side. But the Rangers get three hits on, f three runs rather, on four hits and no errors. We go to the eighth. Texas breaks it open, and it's six to two. And of course, Texas goes with the lefty in Jim Umbarger. Jim making his 24th appearance of the year is 2 and 4 with a 4 4 5 ERA. 
his seventh appearance against the Red Sox. He made one start, 16 innings, 17 hits, 8 runs, 7 earned. He's walked 2 and struck out 11. Last pitched on the 25th against the Birdies. He went one inning against Baltimore and walked a batter. 62 and two-thirds innings, 70 hits, 6 home runs, 35 runs, 31 earned. He's walked 33 and struck out 48. Fastball pitcher at 91. And the ground ball pitcher. I have no idea, Mark, what you're talking about as far as tears and Bob Stanley go. <sighs> so Duffy 0 for 2 with an RBI. Umbarger delivers. Ground ball to short. Campy throws it across the way for the out. And there's one out for Remdog, who's one for two. He struck out, caused a scandal, and drove in a run. In the left center field, Beniquez is there. Two out. Freddie Lynn can't be that bad. So Freddie comes in at 289, really can't hit against a lefty. 13 homers and 56 RBI. If the Red Sox are coming back, they got to do something right now. Ball four will help. So Umbarger lost him, and he'll face Rice, who's 0 for 3 with a strikeout. The pitch, Rice in the center, but that'll stay in the yard. Benitez is there. And that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Texas 6, Boston 2. Lynn is a 10 and a 6 in center. Bump Wills is 1 for 2. He has walked, singled, and scored. Mr. Forsberg was and still is a Tigers fan. In the 70s, we cried when we won. Hits from Stanley. Struck him out. So the steamer got him at a swung on the swing and miss at it at 86. So the first strikeout for Stanley. One out for Campaneras, who's one for two with a stolen base. Got him. So you got a good morning and a good afternoon for Mr. Stanley. How about that? A swing and a miss. On an 0-2 count, it'll be Fisk, Hobson, and a pinch hitter in the ninth for Boston. Highgrove has walked twice and scored twice. He's 0 for 2. Pitch to Highgrove is a ground ball to Kendall. Fred underhands it to Stanley, and the Rangers go in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. After eight, it's Texas six, Boston two. So Fisk, one for three. Hobson and the pinch hitter. The face umbarger. Wind's blowing out to left now at 14. Pitch to Pudge. Little number down to Bavacqua on the cut of the grass over to Highgrove across the way, one out. And that brings up Hobson, who is 0 for 3. With a strikeout. Digital Dice player of the game coming up. Not sure who that's going to be, to be honest. And the rest of the day in baseball. Pitch to Hobson. Popped up right side. Bonds and Hargrove converge. And Mike has it. So two out. Who can hit better than 217? How about George Scott, who's at 225, four homers and 23 RBI. Umbarger delivers. In the right center, and that'll be the ball game. Benitez is there, and the Rangers have won 6-2. to two. So John Matlack is probably going to be our player of the game. He was cruising right along before the rain delay. Goes to 12-3. 
Seven innings, four hits, two runs, all earned. He walked one and struck out five. Teon, six and two thirds, seven innings, five hits, four runs. He walked three and struck out five, and Bob Stanley didn't help his cause at all. So Matt Lack is going to be our player of the game. And so let's do the rest of this Thursday, July 27th, 1978 in baseball. Big doubleheader at the stadium. The Yankees win the opener 9-2. Ed Figueroa gets the win. The Yankees get 17 hits in that one. But they lose the nightcap 8-5. Dan Spillner gets the win. Goose Gossage takes a loss. And Bernie Carbo with his third of the year. Toronto 8, Minnesota 2. Jim Clancy goes to 7-8. Parizanowski takes the loss for the Twins. Detroit beats Baltimore. Don't cry. Uh, four to three. Jack Morris in ten gets the win. He goes to three and four. Scotty McGregor goes to nine and nine. And Eddie Murray goes five for five, by the way, and hits his 18th of the year. Uh, Seattle loses to Kansas City six to five. Larry Gurra goes to four and three. Paul Mitchell will do your hair, but he won't win the ball game. Hal McCray with the seventh of the year. He goes two for four. Chicago behind a four-hitter by Ken Kravick. Shuts out Oakland 8-0. Eric Soderholm, 3-4 for four with his 12th homer of the year. He drove in two. Houston pounds out 20 hits. Enos Cabell goes 5-5 five for five with two RBI as the Astros beat the Mets 10-3. J.R. Richard goes to 8-8. Eight eight. Milwaukee stuns California and Nolan Ryan 6-4. Caldwell gets the win. He's 13 and 6. Ryan slips to 7 and 10. Gorman Thomas with his 24th of the year. Pittsburgh shuts out San Diego. Why do I look weird? I always look weird. Uh, three nothing. Jim Bibby goes to six and four. Omar Moreno three for five, and a stolen base. And that was just a short day in baseball. So. Big weekend series coming up. Phillies and Reds start tomorrow with a doubleheader. We'll have that one for you. We'll have Pittsburgh and Los Angeles over the next couple days, too. So the standings with Phillies, with Pittsburgh's win, that lead is now half a game. So that is a huge doubleheader tomorrow in Cincinnati, 11.30 Eastern in the morning, 8.30 a.m. for those of you on the coast. Dodgers lead over the Reds a six and a half, nine over Houston. And the American lead the Yankees by a game and a half over Milwaukee, three and a half over Baltimore. The Red Sox slip to 12 back. And in the West, California's loss drops them to three back. Kansas City now leads the Rangers in second place by two and a half. California by three, Minnesota by four and a half. And Chicago by six. All right, that'll do it. 11.30 tomorrow morning for some baseball for you. The Phillies and the Reds. And then Wednesday at noon, California and Baltimore. And then Thursday at noon, Pittsburgh and Los Angeles. So good few days of baseball coming up. Enjoy it. We'll talk to you soon. Have yourself a great night, everybody.